great down here at 368 Terminal at Long McQuaid where the music begins. These uh, fine people ordered me in uh, the BC Rich B, formerly known as the BC Rich Bitch. Don't know if I can say that word out loud. Sorry if I offended anybody over here, but can't wait to take it home and unbox this sucker. All right, back at home now uh, with my BC Rich guitar. It's a light one, I know that. I uh, walked it with one, holding it with one arm while wheeling my bike home. See, I got uh, the notification from Long and McQuaid that my uh, guitar had, had come to the Vancouver, BC location where I ordered it to at 368 Terminal. And I was working and I biked into work and I thought rather than go home and walk back down and take a, an Uber back with this thing, I would just uh, transport it home. And it was light enough to do so. So yeah, for those who don't know, uh, BC Rich Guitars, originally a California company. They were the uh, first to make the, uh, the the real heavy metal guitar. Like Gibson were the first in the sense to make pointy shaped guitars. But BC Rich were the ones to take the ball and, and run with it and make all their electric guitars. These uh, crazy weird ass shapes. And... Uh, 24 frets, unlike 22, which was, was the norm of the time. The originals were neck through construction, uh, not set neck like, uh, like Gibson. And, uh, yeah, they were played by a lot of heavy metal players. They were played by uh, Jeff Hanneman from Slayer, Dave Mustaine from Megadeth, uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses. Here in Vancouver, we uh, one of the original... Extreme black metal bands, Blasphemy, Jeff Drake, also known as uh, the Caller of the Storms. He was all about the BC Ridge guitars. And uh, yeah, so this will be the first for me. Bear with me. This is my first unboxing video. So here it goes. I got a bit of tape on the side here. One side open here. Mentioning uh, Jeff Hanneman, I guess I'll mention Kerry King was was more noted to play the BC Rich guitar. He had his own signature model, the BC Rich Warlock. Oh, you can't forget Motley Crue as well. Nikki Six, he had the Warlock bass. Okay, here here it is. This this is the moment I've been waiting for. It opens up. Oh, here we go. Uh, nice nice big cheese cloth. Lots of uh, styrofoam here. Uh. Take the cheesecloth off them off now. Oh yeah. Oh nice wood finish here. This Koa wood is, is the name of this. So yeah, this is like I said, the BC Rich uh, B, also known as the uh, formerly known as the BC Rich Bitch. When I was in the store there, there was a uh, a child with his with his mom. Oh man, this thing needs a tuning. Ah, uh, boy, does it ever. But yeah, um, ebony fretboard, I'm told. All this, uh, this looks like, like a very dark rosewood. Um, it's got uh, the double DiMarzio cream pickups. Big fan of look, big fan of DiMarzios. Are, although, I don't know, um, I haven't tried these ones out before. These are called the activator pickups. And I, I'm usually in used to the social distortion and the social distortion, the super distortion. Yeah, we're, we're talking pickups, not, not old LA punk bands here. Um, yeah, so the DiMarzio, they're deactivators. They are, uh, they are supposed to replicate, uh, active pickups, but these are, are passives. I guess that's the name deactivator. Man, there sure is a lot of switches here. More fancy than I'm used to. And, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, uh, hard tail. There's no whammy bar system. Nice, nice, ba you know, nice and basic here. Um, seems to resonate pretty good despite being very out of tune. Yeah, look at that. All right, so uh, next thing to tune this guy up and uh, plug her in and see how it sounds. All tuned up, all plugged in now, uh, raring to go. I was going to say, this uh, guitar is made in Korea, but it's not cheap by any stretch. Uh, 
in American dollars on the Sweetwater website, it goes for fifteen hundred, and it was twenty two hundred plus tax here in town. So yeah, it's about a twenty five hundred dollar guitar, all in. But I'm seeing a lot of Japanese copies of this going for about that price as well nowadays. And uh, yeah, the American ones go for about ten thousand dollars, something very ridiculous. And uh, to find a used one, yeah, they go for upwards around ten grand as well, and so yeah, they're they're not a cheap guitar by any stretch. So, yeah, this guitar may be a little bit cheaper in price because of its origin, but it's uh, definitely not a cheap piece by any stretch. I mean, look look how how nice this this wood grain is. It's 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 very nice. Uh, one thing I don't like are these pickups. Actually, they sound phenomenal. But uh, I don't like the writing on them, the uh, Made in the USA, blah, blah, blah. I don't like Seymour Duncans for, for that very reason. Although I have started to see Seymour Duncans that don't have the writing on the bobbin. But uh, originally, that, that, that was what I saw them on. And I thought, geez, you guys, you're not that special. You don't have to write your pickup name on them. But I guess DeMarzio are no better. Although I've had better luck with DeMarzio than uh, Seymour Duncan, as far as uh, personal preference goes. Um, yeah, the 50th anniversary thing on the headstock, not a huge fan of it, but I can, I can live with it. And these tuners are really cool. They are Grovers. They've got these nice uh, ridges on them. Very cool indeed. Um, yeah, there was no case that came with it. The case is an extra $250 or $350, is it? I don't know. The gig bag is about 100 bucks. So yeah, no case came with it. No... No real candy. The only thing that really came with it was some uh, strap locks to go with the strap lock buttons. Um, but I, I don't go for those anymore either. I like the plastic washer things better because, uh, yeah, I find that the, the, the strap on, the, the uh, wrenched on strap on things kind of, uh, kind of get loose often. So I gave up on that system a while back. So yeah, why don't we hear what this, uh, what this guitar can do. Uh, let's, uh, we're, we're on the uh, clean channel right now. I'm going through my uh, Mesa Boogie Badlander rectifier. Picked it up a while back, also at Long and McQuaid. Uh, it was it was on sale in their uh, in their um, in their custom shop room, and I also got the cab from them as well. It's a trainer uh, dark horse two by twelve. It's got selection greenbacks, and it's a, it's a good sounding cab, and it's a, it's a great addition to any uh, living room or any bedroom. So, uh, at least anybody that digs uh, rock and roll. Um, yeah, so let's hear the sounds. This is on the clean channel right now, so. Lots of buttons. I, these, we're in the, uh, we got both pickups on now, so. Uh, yeah, so these, these little switches turn into a single coil. This is not a kind of guitar that I would want uh, um, a single coil active on. You don't play a BC Rich to, well at least I never would, to, to play rock. I've got a Stratocaster for that. To, so to, to get the full dirt on it, I'd want to, I'd, I'd always want to be gauged in the, uh, the full humbucker position. I think I'm probably going to get this taken out. And as I played this for a little bit, yeah, the action needs to be lowered a little bit. Uh, but that's an easy fix. And uh, yeah, so... There's, there's this switch as well. Not sure exactly what it does, but it seems to sound the best at the bottom. See, it sounds the fullest of that, so. setting on the Mesa Boogie Batlander. <laughs>
Rich Legacy B.